Today I'm here in Morristown, Tennessee to talk to aviation legend Evelyn Johnson. Miss Evelyn has logged more than 57,000 hours, more than any other female pilot. She has given more FAA check rides than any other individual and has received many awards during her long career. Evelyn Stone was born in Corbin, Kentucky in 1909, the oldest of three children. Her father, a railroad conductor, relocated the family to Tennessee in 1914. Miss Evelyn graduated from Westland College in 1929. She then enrolled in a graduate program at the University of Tennessee, where she met W.J. Bryan. The two were married in 1931. After Pearl Harbor, Mr. Bryan joined the Army Air Corps, leaving Miss Evelyn home to care for the couple's dry cleaning business. Miss Evelyn soon became bored and began looking for a hobby. What was it that made you want to become a pilot? One Sunday morning, I got ready for church a little early, so I sat down on the couch and picked up the newspaper. On the front page of the newspaper, you never see any advertising, but there was some that day. About a four-inch square at the bottom of the front page, there was an ad that just simply said, Learn to fly. Well, that's for me. That's what I'll do. So what was it like taking your first flight? Well, it was great. I got next Sunday and took my first lesson. Got on a train in Jefferson City, went to Knoxville, got off, got on a city bus, rode out to the end of the line, got on a rowboat, and got a ride across the river in a rowboat, and took my first lesson in the Piper Cub. It was love at first flight, and all these years later, it still is. Miss Evelyn soloed on November 8, 1944. Within three years, she obtained her private and commercial pilot's licenses and became a certified flight instructor. She soloed her first student, Eileen Woodbury, on the 4th of July, 1947. Always eager to try something new, Miss Evelyn soon learned to fly helicopters, becoming only the 20th woman to earn a helicopter license. She soon joined the Whirly Girls, an exclusive club consisting of women pilots who had earned a helicopter rating. Miss Evelyn has had many harrowing adventures in her long and distinguished flying career. Have you ever had to make an off-airport landing? Yeah, I've had uh, uh, two engine failures and had to land just out in field. Mm -hmm. I've had uh, one airplane swallow a valve and I thought that was going to quit right there. But I just kept flying the plane and keeping it in the best shape I could. It was out in Texas. And I made it back 22 miles from the airport. And just as I touched down, it quit. So I was mm -hmm. okay then. I had a fire in the engine one time and got back to the airport safely. Kind of funny, right after I landed and got off in the grass, got out and made sure I had the fire out all the way. An airplane landed and pulled in the grass, and he said, what's your problem? I told him. He said, well, you're fortunate. I'm your insurance man. <laughs> <laughs> in 1958, Miss Evelyn became a witness to a tragic helicopter accident. Came down in front of where I was standing with two little boys that had come to see the helicopter. And they went past us and then turned right and then turned right again and started climbing up. And suddenly I noticed the helicopter is in a bad shape. I grabbed the telephone and I called the operator. I told her to... Uh, um, get an ambulance out to the airport quick because the helicopter had just crashed by that time he had hit. Then I hung up the phone and took, we had a big fire extinguisher. And I couldn't carry it, but I could drag it. So I drug it out there and laid it on the ground. Then I got down on the ground and crawled under the blade that was going around and hitting the ground and was able to reach in and turn off the engine and it quit going around hitting the ground. And then I entered the fire extinguisher on the engine and the transmission. They were beginning to burn. Got that over with and then I went to pay attention to the pilot and the passenger. 
the passenger was evidently dead. There's just three drops of blood on his nose, but he was, you could tell he was dead. No movement, no sound, no nothing. But the pilot was pretty bad off, but he was in that, what you'd say, semi-conscious. And the moaning and going on, going on, and I started trying to pull him out. It's a good thing I quit, because they say if you uh, pull on somebody that's got a broken back, you could kill them. Finally, when the uh, help came, it took seven of us to get, uh, get the pilot out, and so it's a good thing we didn't pull on him. But he lived 42 years more. Miss Evelyn, how many flight hours do you have? It's a 7,635 and four tenths. My goodness, that's amazing. And uh, so Guinness says no woman has ever flown that much before. And I've flown more than any living pilot. No man. That, no man or woman well, flown. That's living more. has. Uh, now there's some that's dead. Mm. Well, there's one. And it's kind of cute in a way. He was from Montgomery, Alabama. He worked for the state of Alabama, flying power line and, and things like that, inspections. And when he was, they say down in Montgomery that his last words on this earth were, don't let that woman get more flying time than I've got. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you took that last flight? 96. 96 years old. That's amazing. Oh. 101 now. 101. Well, you are an amazing woman. I've had a good time. <laughs>